Good afternoon, everyone. Today we'll be discussing our industry partner, Nestle USA, and the work we've done to improve their category forecasting system. I'm Amy Beckwith, the project manager. I am Shalisa Mudio. I'm Joseph Goodman. We had the privilege to work with Reagan Barnes, Emily Power, and Adosai Bongbei, who all work in the Nestle office located in Rogers, Arkansas. The goal of our project was to accurately forecast category sales using data mining and predictive analytics. And now Sully will give a further explanation of our industry partner. Thank you, Amy. Nestle is a nutrition, health, and wellness company which provides food and other health and wellness products worldwide. Nestle was founded by Henry Nestle in Switzerland in 1867. The company's first product was infant formula, but it quickly grew to produce chocolate, instant coffee, and various other food and beverage products. Nestle as an entity in the United States is internally referred to as Nestle in the market, and it's made up by six operating companies that are Gerber, Nestle Purina, Nestle Health Science, Nestle Professional, Nespresso, and Nestle USA. The team we're working with is part of Nestle USA, which makes up mostly food and coffee products. Specifically, we're working with Nestle's office in Rogers, Arkansas, which focuses on its Walmart and Sam's Club operations. The segment of Nestle USA that we're working with is its Walmart category advisorships. Walmart has selected Nestle to offer professional advice on product assortment in four categories, chill creamers, baking, frozen meals, and frozen entertaining. Nestle has been selected by Walmart for advisorships in these categories because Walmart sees Nestle as a leading brand in each of these four categories. As the category advisor, Nestle's job is to guide Walmart in how to set up the categories modular based on unbiased data analysis for all SKU in the categories. A modular, as we can see on the image at the right, provided by our industry partners, is a set of products on display on a Walmart shelf. Thinking of Walmart sales as a buy, Nestle sales team's job is to grow Nestle's slice of the pie, while the category advisor's goal is to grow the pie as a whole. Enlarging the whole pie naturally enlarges Nestle's slice of the pie. Having category advisor chips is important because Nestle is able to help drive growth for their categories, which naturally drives growth for Nestle. They are also able to build relationships with Walmart buyers. Walmart buyers are the Walmart employees that have the final say in modular layout. If Nestle makes unbiased, data-driven, accurate recommendations to the buyer, the benefit is twofold because category sales increase and Nestle gains reputability with Walmart. On the flip side, if Nestle makes poor recommendations, Walmart's trust in them will be tarnished. In order to provide accurate model or assortment recommendations to the buyer, it is essential that Nestle has good predictions for future performance. Currently, Nestle's forecasting system is entirely backwards looking to predict sales for May 2021, they will simply look at data from, from May 2020 and predict that the item will perform identically in May 2021, um, as it is shown in this slide. Nestle will then make recommendations to the buyer based on these predictions, and the buyer will make the final decision on, on the final assortment. In an interview with our industry partners, we learned that Nestle sends weekly reports to Walmart buyers in their four advisorship categories. For these reports, Nestle simply looks at the previous week's performance and explains why they think the numbers are what they are. It will be ideal for Nestle to provide the buyers with accurate predictions for future sales in these reports rather than just looking back at what happened in the past. As leaders in many food and beverage categories, Nestle feels as if its forecasting system is not near as robust as it should be. To maintain its good relationship, relationships with Walmart and continue driving growth in its four advisorship categories, Nestle believes that it can do a much better job of presenting Walmart with accurate and reliable predictions. And now Joe will explain our analysis of the current forecasting system. The category management team rarely looks back to compare past predictions with current data. Since they do not have a standard measure for forecast accuracy, Nestle gave the team freedom to decide how we would measure forecast error. After researching different methods to evaluate forecasts, the team decided to use mean absolute percentage error, or MAPE, to measure the current system's accuracy. 
We selected MAEP as our error measurement because out of the widely accepted measures for evaluating forecasts, it is the easiest to understand. MAEP summarizes error as a percentage. Other error measures such as mean squared error and root mean squared error were considered but are hard to interpret by themselves. For these reasons, MAPE is the simplest and best measure for the system's performance. According to our industry partners at Nestle USA, Nestle USA's goal is to have a forecasting system that is reliable and consistent in its predictions at a category level. The team performed research to determine if there was an industry standard for acceptable mate values, but found that there is no such standard. It is unwise to set arbitrary forecasting goals because it is impossible to know the forecastability of future demand. Instead, the goal should be, should be to improve upon the naive approach. In Nestle USA's case, this would mean improving the mates from their current values. Nestle provided the team with historical sales and distribution data spanning from 2017 to 2019 for the four advisorship categories. It included data types like Walmart week, store number, brand, a unique code for each item, POS sales, POS quantity, and more. We aggregated this data by Walmart week and then calculated MAPE on a category level from 2017 to 2018 in 2018 to 2019. The table on the screen summarizes our findings. At the category level, MAPE range from about 5% to 17%. These values give us a picture of how Nestle's current system is performing and confirms that Nestle has reason for concern and it led us to start asking where this error could be coming from. Through data exploration and an interview with the Nestle USA team, we were able to identify several potential sources of error in the current system. We created a fishbone diagram to organize these potential error sources and with guidance from our Nestle USA industry partners, determine the focus of further investigation. The key factors we determined were holidays shifting to different Walmart weeks year over year, as well as overall category growth and decline over the years. We can see graphically that one source of, errors, of error is the holidays. For example, the baking category sees its highest sales of the year on the week of Thanksgiving. Frozen meals, however, sees a steep decline in sales during the Thanksgiving week. This makes sense because during the Thanksgiving holiday, more people make baked goods and less people eat frozen meals. From year to year, holidays such as Thanksgiving don't always fall within the same Walmart week. In 2018, Thanksgiving was in Walmart week 43, while in 2019, it fell into Walmart week 44. As can be seen in the graph, this caused the Thanksgiving spike in the baking category to be off by an entire week. This doesn't only occur for the Thanksgiving holiday. Even holidays that are on the same day each year, such as Christmas, switch from one Walmart week to another approximately once every four years. It is clear just from looking at the graph on the slide that these holiday shifts can cause large amounts of error. And now Amy will explain another source of error in the current system. Thanks, Joe. Another contributor to error in the current system is category growth and decline. While some categories are stationary over time, others are not. From 2017 to 2019, the frozen meals category has declined steadily. Using 2018 sales to predict 2019 sales for a category that's growing or declining does not yield accurate results. In the figure on the slide, you can see that sales for the frozen meals category were higher in almost every week of 2018 than 2019. This shows us that for categories that have a trend of growth or decline, a forecast which takes this trend into account could likely improve the accuracy. A more concrete way to measure whether a category is growing or declining over time is with the stationarity test. Time series data is considered stationary if it has a constant mean and variance over time. Simply looking at a graph can sometimes be misleading because stationary data may have short periods where the mean or variance, mean or variance slightly changes. Two common statistical tests for stationarity are the ADF test and the KPSS test. Both tests seek to prove or disprove stationarity in time series data. If the data for frozen meals is non-stationary, it will confirm what we appeared to see graphically on the previous slide, that sales for the category have a trend over time. 
To evaluate the stationarity of the four categories, we used R to run ADF and KPSS tests for each category. A rejection of the null hypothesis in the ADF test means the data is in fact stationary, while on the other hand, a rejection of the null hypothesis in the KPSS test means the data is not stationary. So they're pretty much the opposite of each other, but they have the same objective of proving whether the data is stationary. So based on the results, we can see that chilled creamers and frozen meals are non-stationary and baking is stationary. Frozen Entertaining presented a particular outcome where both tests contradicted each other, but our research showed that it's best to assume the data is non-stationary in this case. Based on these findings, it's confirmed that for the chilled creamers, frozen meals, and likely the frozen entertaining categories, the data is not stationary over time. It's necessary to take trends over time into account in order to have more accurate forecasts. To improve Nestle USA's forecasting system, we first research potential forecasting techniques. Given the highly seasonal nature of our data, we knew that we needed an approach that took seasonality into account. We quickly narrowed our focus to the three best options, profit, seasonal ARIMA models, and ARIMA models with regressors from the Fourier series. Profit is an open source forecasting package developed by Facebook. The main advantage of profit is its ease of use. The package was developed in such a way that people with little knowledge of forecasting and statistics can easily forecast their data. It's extremely easy to add in holiday effects with Profit, and Profit also handles missing data fairly well. The disadvantage of Profit is that forecast accuracy is rarely better than ARIMA and other statistical approaches, and it's also harder to fine tune the model because of the highly automated nature of the package. In addition to profit, we considered two types of ARIMA models, a seasonal ARIMA model and ARIMA with regression from the Fourier series. We will dive more into ARIMA in the next slide, but the basic difference between seasonal ARIMA and ARIMA with Fourier regressors is that seasonal ARIMA uses seasonal autoregressive integrated and moving average terms to model seasonality, while ARIMA with Fourier regressors uses the Fourier series to model seasonality. If you aren't familiar with the Fourier series, it's a way of approximating any function as the sum of sine and cosine terms. Some advantages of using seasonal ARIMA models include excellent short-term forecasting accuracy and little need for external data. Disadvantages include poor long-term forecasting accuracy and inability to account for complex and non-integer seasonality. Advantages of using ARIMA with Fourier regressors include the ability to account for complex and non-integer seasonality and the ability to control forecast smoothness by tweaking the K parameter. A disadvantage is the fact that seasonality is assumed to be fixed. Early in the modeling process, we decided to eliminate profit from consideration because it lacks the ability for the user to control parameters as fully as they can with ARIMA. And it typically underperforms ARIMA. Therefore, we spent the majority of our efforts exploring ARIMA models. So because we ended up using ARIMA, we decided to dive a bit deeper into all that goes on in an ARIMA model. ARIMA stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. An ARIMA model has three parts. The autoregressive part forecasts the data by performing regression on past values of the data. The integrated part of the model involves differencing. Differencing is a method of transforming non-stationary data so that the mean and variance are stabilized for modeling. And after modeling with the difference data, the data is integrated, which means the differencing is undone and it's transformed back to its original nature. The moving average portion of the model uses past forecast errors in a regression-like model to create a weighted moving average. A regular ARIMA model has P, D, and Q terms, which correspond to the three parts of the model. 
a seasonal arima model has these terms as well, but it also has a second set of capital P, D, and Q terms for the seasonal part of the model. The M denotes the seasonal period. In our case, we have weekly data with yearly seasonality, so M would equal 52. As mentioned previously, one of the main problems with both the current system and early developments of the model was the effect that holidays had on forecasts. Through research and discussions with our industry partners, the solution we found was using causal holiday variables that would act as regressor in our model to account for the impact that holidays have on sales. We researched potential statistical methods to determine which holiday regressor should be chosen, but we found that often forecasting is more an art than a science. And the final decision on which causal variables to include in the ARIMA model comes down to common sense and trial and error. Many holidays impacts on categories were obvious, such as the major spikes in the baking category each year around Thanksgiving and Christmas. Some holidays, however, have impacts that are not as obvious from a simple visual examination, such as Easter and Halloween. With major holidays, such as Thanksgiving and Christmas, the weeks leading up to the holidays also have an impact on sales because people begin planning for holiday gatherings weeks in advance. For example, we found that add, yeah, adding causal variables for three weeks in leading up to Thanksgiving improved our modeling results. The table on this slide is an example of what these variables look like in a tabular form. Something to note is that the holidays we determined were, were having an impact on each category can be adjusted as needed by our industry partners, as we have created a matrix for all US holidays that they can utilize as needed. Using the knowledge we gained from our research on the ARIMA model, we were able to implement the ARIMA modeling process in a dynamic way so that it can be applied to any level of data input into our model. The forecast package was a vital component in our modeling result. This package was developed to help analyze and display any varied time series forecasts, which include the ARIMA models. The auto.arima function is a part of the forecast package. This function takes time series data and automatically fits an ARIMA model by minimizing the AIC and the VIC. The inputs of the auto.arima function are the training set of the time series data, which in our case is the historical data being used to train the model. In addition, we supply the function with a set of holiday regressor variables into the XREC parameter, which takes external regressors and adds them to the model. The top figure shows the auto.arima function with example code. In our scenario, fit is the fitted model. Data train.ts is a time series of the historical data, and holiday train is the contingent matrix with the binary holiday regressor variables. For ARIMA models using four year series, XREC is a matrix not only containing holiday regressors, but also terms of the Fourier series fit to the data using the Fourier function. After fitting an ARIMA model, the forecast function can be used to predict future values. Similar to the parameters in the auto.arima function, the parameters for the forecast are the seasonal ARIMA model object, age, which is the forecasting horizon or length of the forecast, and another XREG parameter, which is where the known future values of the holiday regressors are stored. We fit models using both of our considered ARIMA approaches for each category. The first table on the screen shows the results of our MATE calculations for each category forecasting with both techniques with a forecasting horizon of 52 weeks. The data used to train the model was from 2014 to 2018 and for te the testing set of the model, sales from 2019 were used. The results in the table were concerning to the team because they showed little to no improvement from the current system's values. After performing research and multiple industry partner interviews, we considered the fact that forecasting a full 52 weeks in advance may not be realistic or necessary. Nestle USA confirmed this to us and said that they do not need to predict a predict sales a full year in advance, and they rarely need to predict more than 10 weeks in advance. This resulted in a decision for us to lower the forecasting horizon for our testing set below 52 weeks and look at shorter forecasts, shorter horizon forecasts. 
To begin exploring shorter forecasting horizons for seasonal ARIMA and ARIMA with regression from four year series, we decided to first calculate MAPE for the last 10 weeks of 2019 for each category using both methods. The second table shows the results we obtained. These results make clear that the decision to forecast at smaller horizons is a good idea. Not only are MAPE values much lower forecasting 10 weeks rather than 52 weeks, but these values are also lower than the MAPE for the current system, indicating that at shorter horizons, both models provide improvement from the current system. But seasonal ARIMA outperformed ARIMA with Fourier regression for each category. For this reason, we came to the conclusion that we would move forward using the seasonal ARIMA model to perform the forecast for Nestle USA. After shortening the forecasting horizon and making a decision on which forecasting model we would use, we decided that we wanted to dig deeper into error measurement. If the model is still effective past 10 weeks, this would be good information for Nestle USA to have in order to know which scenarios they can effectively use the new forecasting system in. Using an R script that has two for loops, we ran each interval length through the process shown on this slide. For example, for a 10 week interval, the inner for loop runs five times, producing five 10 week chunks of forecast. There was a conditional if statement that would run at the end of the five iterations to predict the remaining values within the full 52 week forecast we wanted. In this situation, it'd predict the last two weeks. The figures on the slide show the graphs for the time interval links versus MAPE for all four categories for the horizon spanning from two weeks to 52 weeks in advance. The blue horizontal line represents the current system's MAPE for the category for 2019, and the orange dots show the MAPE values when using different forecasting horizons. The figures confirm that shorter forecasting horizons result in less error, and forecasting only a few weeks ahead will provide significantly lower error than the current system. For example, in the chilled creamers graph on the top right, it can be clearly seen that there's a linear trend between forecasting horizon and MAPE. And around the 22 week mark, the current system performs at about the same level as the seasonal ARIMA model. This table summarizes MAPE values for each category and compares them to the current system for a forecasting horizon of up to 10 weeks. Across all categories, we saw an improvement when shortening the forecasting horizon down to 10 weeks or less. This led us to decide on narrowing down our forecasting tool to only predicting up to 10 weeks. And we confirmed this with Nestle USA when discussing their goals for our support tool. It is worth noting that these MAPE values are for 2019 only both the current system as well as the seasonal arima with different horizons. This is important because the current system's MAPE is volatile from year to year. For example, if there happens to be a holiday shift in 2021, the current system's MAPE values could jump substantially. Therefore, it is best to take the results from the figure on the slide and draw the general conclusion that smaller forecasting horizons result in lower MAPE. And once the horizon reaches about 10 weeks, the MAPE value may not be any better than the current system. One of the main benefits of the new forecasting system that the new forecasting system will have for Nestle USA is its reliability. Currently, MAPE is volatile from year to year, and it is hard for Nestle USA to know how accurate their predictions will be. With the new statistical model-based approach, Nestle USA won't have to worry about this volatility as the seasonal ARIMA model with all day regressors automatically takes into account growth and decline over time, as well as the effects of holidays that may or may not be in the same week from year to year. As, as a result, Nestle USA can have more confidence in their forecasts as they provide recommendations to Walmart concerning category sales trends. The updated forecasting system will impact Nestle USA by helping the category advisors provide a more reliable category sales advice to Walmart. This prediction method, as illustrated in this slide, uses data from previous years as opposed to the current system that use methods uh, that only consider data from a prior year. Through the user interface, the operator will select a series of filters that will control the outcome of the final prediction. Even though Nestle USA's current forecasting method is not ideal, it has provided them with good enough results 
to en enable them to continue working with the different category advisorships for Walmart. The implementation of the new forecasting system will not only allow Nestle USA to support Walmart and better anticipate an alternate plan of action in product assortment as a function of sales, but it will also ensure that Walmart continues seeing Nestle USA as a leading brand and as a liable partner in business. In an email conversation with Reagan Barnes, Director of Category Management, we asked about the value of the category advisorships to Nestle USA. She mentioned that the economic benefit of having category advisorships is roughly around three to five million dollars. Based on this, it is clear that being able to provide recommendations to Walmart using a forward-looking forecasting system rather than a backwards-looking assumption is extremely valuable to Nestle USA. Accurate forecasting in their weekly sales report will help grow their trust in Walmart and ensure that they don't lose their advisorships. For the process of creating a user interface for Nestle USA, we consider two options, RShiny and Microsoft Power BI. The first alternative, RShiny, is an open source R package which main objective is to produce interactive applications using R. The second option, Power BI, is a variety of cloud-based applications that help collect, manage, and analyze data from a variety of sources through one interface. To determine which of these was a better fit for our project, we studied Nestle USA's requirements, which were fo focused on filtering levels. After some deliberation, we agreed to use RShiny, since it's more customizable than Power BI and has no limited R scripting capabilities. Our Shiny app is composed by two components, which are the user interface script and the server script. When the user selects a parameter on the screen, our Shiny communicates with the server by sending a new value of the parameter. The server processes the call, proceeds to generate the results, and sends it to the user. For example, the Shiny app that we have developed considers several, several filtering options such as category, forecasting horizon, brand, and region. If the user wants to forecast sales for a specific category, they will choose the category from the list, select how many weeks in advance they want to forecast for, and if desired, they, can, they could also choose the brand or a specific region. Once the user has finished the selection process, they click the update forecast button and wait for the app to output the visual representation of the forecast and a table with the specific cell values forecasted. Our tool accounts for the forecast percent of change, including the specific Walmart Week 53 situation that only occurs every seven years. We have also included a feature for the user to download the output as a CSV file so that further analysis on the forecast can be performed if desired, as it can be seen in the current slide. For the new forecasting system to be functional for Nestle USA, there are a few things they must consider. First, Nestle USA must determine how they would like to feed data into the tool to have up-to-date forecasts. The forecasting tool we created reads data from a CSV file containing weekly sales data from 2017 to 2019. In practice, Nestle USA will want to be able to use the tool with live data that updates each week rather than with a single set of historical data. One option is for Nestle USA to connect the tool to their database. Based on our research, connecting R to a database is fairly simple and can be done using open source packages. Because the current R code reads data from a CSV file, the code would have to be modified to read the data from a database instead. The advantage of this approach is that once the tool is successfully connected to the database, there wouldn't be any front-end work to perform forecasts. The tool would pull the correct data automatically. The disadvantage of this approach is that it would initially be more work for Nestle USA. They'd have to make the appropriate changes to our R code, which may be a challenge given that they are unfamiliar with R. The other option is for Nestle USA to replace the underlying CSV file each time they would like to run a new forecast. This would require pulling and aggregating the appropriate data each week. The advantage of this approach is that Nestle USA would not have to make any edits to our R code, so there would be little work up front to get the tool to work. The disadvantage is that forecasting 
the forecasting process would take longer as Nestle USA would have to pull a new set of data each week to perform its weekly forecasts. Ultimately, it's up to Nestle USA to decide which option is the most suitable for their situation. Nestle USA must also start keeping track of forecasts so that they can be compared with actuals and error can be tracked. Currently, when Nestle USA makes sales predictions based on past data, they do not go back to see how accurate these predictions were. We recommend that Nestle USA use the output to CSV function of the forecasting tool to save their predictions. Once the forecasted time periods have passed, Nestle USA should calculate MAPE for their forecast to see forecast performance. To assist with this process, we created a forecasting MAPE calculator in Excel for Nestle USA to use. To use this calculator, Nestle USA simply needs to paste the forecasted and actual values in their respective columns, and then MAPE is automatically calculated. We believe that having this tool will add ease to the process and encourage Nestle USA to track MAPE for their forecasts. So in summary, here are a few key takeaways from our project. Nestle is the largest food and beverage company in the world and Walmart is the largest retailer in the world. Nestle has four category advisorships with Walmart, meaning that they are trusted by Walmart to give unbiased recommendations on how to lay out the modulars for these categories. Nestle wants to maintain a good relationship with Walmart by offering sound advice for these categories. Nestle USA's current system to predict future sales is far too simplistic and backwards looking. They simply look at historical data, assuming that sales from year to year will be the same. Nestle USA does not take into account factors such as holiday shifts or growth and decline over time. We improved Nestle USA's forecasting system by implementing seasonal ARIMA models with holiday regressors. Each category saw MAP improvement for forecasts up to 10 weeks in advance. At a two week horizon, MAP was improved for each category by 17 to 55%. We also created a dynamic tool in R Shiny to assist Nestle USA in its forecasting and reporting to Walmart. And now I'll briefly turn it over to Adosa Ibongbe from Nestle USA to provide some comments on how this tool will impact operations at Nestle USA. Thank you, Amy. Um, and again, thanks everyone for hopping on. Uh, we were very delighted to work with the Capstone team this year. And um, this project has been uh, a really good benefit to Nestle. Uh, one of the applications we see, and I think um, it was touched on, was just that ability to alert Walmart, especially the Walmart buyer, on upcoming um, events that are gonna impact sales. So be they dips or spikes in sales compared to the same week last year due to shifts in holidays, um, being able to alert the buyer and make sure that they understand why those sales numbers that they're going to see are the way they're going to be instead of just reporting on past events uh, would be great. And that's really going to help us stay ahead as a category team within Walmart to remain best in class and cement our value to Walmart as a team that not only does what most other category teams do, but can deliver above and beyond um, what is typically expected. As far as the future goes, um, we're really excited. One of the things we wanna do is not only look at events as holidays, but think about other events like weather events and how those impact sales and trends, uh, not only in the year they happen, but in the next year, when we're looking at comparison of sales and um, incorporating this tool into our day-to-day -day experience. And so right now it's a standalone tool in Power BI, but there's gonna be a need to incorporate it better, be that with uh, linking directly to our data or some other approach. And um, it sounds like we might be able to partner with an upcoming Capstone team and, and get some of that work done by the smart minds that uh, INEG keeps producing every year. So once again, thank you guys so much. Um, it was our pleasure for sure working with you guys and uh, hopefully our paths cross again, uh, albeit at that point in a professional 
you know, you guys will be working places and uh, we will connect that way as well. So I appreciate it and thank you again. Thanks, Adosa. Um, lastly, we just want to give th a thank you to our industry partners at Nestle for the help and support they've given us throughout the course of this experience. It really has been a great project and we've gained a ton of valuable experience through it. So thank you all so much for your attention. This concludes our presentation and we'll be happy, happy to take any questions now.